Okay, so uh, as she said, my name is Niall Caffrey. I'm just going to be talking to you about how we can use a few Windows features that you may or may not already know about and how we can use them for penetration testing. So just a quick run through of what we're going to be talking about. First up, just a quick introductory slide of who I am, what I'm all about. Then I'm going to run on to Windows Subsystem for Linux. How we can use this as a, a test environment, as an environment that we can use for penetration testing. We're going to then talk about Windows Sandbox, how we can use that for reverse engineering. Windows Subsystem for Android, a notice feature that they have, and how we can use that for emulation of Android applications. And then just a quick thing on what good are these for us and why we may want to use them instead of VMware or VirtualBox or Android Studio even. And then there's a few other random features that have a bit of honorable mentions there as well. So first up, who am I? I'm an ethical hacker. I'm one of the senior consultants at Edgecan. I've been there for eight years now, started 2015. I was, went straight from college into pen testing. So if, if there's any students here who want to get into pen testing, that is a, a viable way to get in. You can just go straight from college and straight in. In my a bit of spare time and as part of my work, I do a bit of security research as well. I am a gamer as well. I love single player RPGs mostly. Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk. I'm really looking forward to that now next week. I'm also just a general all around nerd as well, as most of us are. There are, there are my social media accounts. I'm, be, I don't feel much on Mastodon at all. It's there if you want, if you want to follow me on it. I do tweet a small bit, but not that much. So again, if you want to follow me on it, go, feel free. So first up, Windows subsystem for Linux. What is it? So it was first released back in about 2016 by Microsoft. And at first, it was really just a way to emulate Linux binaries on Windows. You couldn't do much with it for pen testing or network testing or anything like that. But about two or three years later, they released this WSL2. So this one was a full virtual machine. You can run any most popular GNU or Linux distributions that are available can be just run directly in Windows without needing to install VirtualBox or VMware or Hyper or Hyper-V or any other virtualization software that you would not typically be using. So what OSs can we install? So by default, we can install some of the popular distributions we have Ubuntu is the default one if you go to install it. We also have Debian and a few of the, the Ubuntu long-term support for OSs as well. There's a few enterprise distributions as well that we can use. There's Oracle Linux, OpenSUSE as well is available there for, for use. And uh, for, because we're all hackers, there's a security-focused distribution. So Kali Linux Rolling is actually one of the officially supported ones by Microsoft as part of WSL. There are other ones you can install and, you, and get from the Microsoft Store or from GitHub or tutorials. I've seen plenty of tutorials by using Parrot OS and how to install that. There's actually there's a new one called Athena OS. It's a new penetration distribution as well that is available through the Microsoft Store that you can install it from there. And I've seen other tutorials just talking about how to get any, any Unix distribution at all and how you can just export that and import it into WSL and run it there. So Kali Linux, the one most familiar with as pen testers. It's a distribution officially done by Kali, so every single update to Kali, all the rolling updates will be brought in, are brought into this one as well. It's the same as the cloud versions. So it's, it's a blank distribution. All tools can be installed in it from the meta packages or from the repositories if you, if you want to. So before we go a bit any further, there are some downsides and limitations to WSL. So out of the box, it doesn't come with a bridged adapter. It's that to use a, net, a NAT network only. 
does not create USB support out of the box either. You can pass through USB <coughs> sticks and anything, but USB adapters, you can't get working straight out of the box with it. So for testing, penetration testing, if these features are needed for a test, if you need a bridge adapter for to open up a pod, if you need to connect a Wi-Fi adapter or a Bluetooth adapter, then you're better off using a normal VM through VirtualBox, VMware, any of those. Any other tech kind of testing, you can just use WSL for. Personally, I'm, I am using it on a daily basis. It is my go-to machine run of VM for penetration testing. So, moving on. So, Kali have added, by default, WSL is a command line interface only. Kali themselves have decided to add a desktop environment to that. So, they've created WinCAX. Does three modes for it. You can go window mode, which will, open, which will use VNC, and will just open up a desktop environment that you can, you can run all the, all the, the normal GUI applications from that. They have seamless mode as well, which this will just basically create an overlap between Kali and Windows. So you can see there, the, Kali, the, the normal Kali taskbar is there open with the start menu, and you can access all GUI applications from there. Downside to the seamless mode, if you have a window open full screen in Windows, it gets caught off from the taskbar up at the top. But again, you can unlock, if you want to, you can unlock the taskbar and get around that. And then does enhanced session mode. So this was designed for systems that are running on ARM. It just uses native protocols and clients for Windows. And is basically a, an RD, just an RDP window into Kali. So WSL in general comes with some built-in integrations with the Windows operating system so, to make use of. You can access the file systems from either machine in in the, each machine. So you can access Kali uh, under the Kali file system from Windows, the Windows file system from Kali. There are a few Windows binaries that you can, and commands that you can run from inside Kali as as well. So what does that look like? You can see here on the on the left is. What, what the file system will look like in Windows. You can open Windows Explorer on, in Windows 11 on the, on the, in the shortcuts. You can just access Linux. And I'll bring up all of the, all of the WSL distributions you have and just access the file system from there. In Kali, they're just auto mounted in slash MNT by default. <coughs> Windows have decided to add more features to it though. So this is kind of, WinCAX doesn't run great at, at the moment because of this, but it can still work. But Windows have, have introduced WSL G, they call it. So it's a part to run GUI applications. The aim is to have just an integrated desktop experience. So any tools in Kali that run a GUI, we can just access straight from Windows. Again, what will, what will this look like? In the start menu, we can just browse to the, Ka, uh, to the Kali folder that we have there and just access every single tool that has a GUI from there. We can use this Windows search menu just to search for any tool that, that's in Kali and run it from there. Windows Terminal, that is, this is just a tool that is in all win, on all Windows 11 by default. They've brought this in as the default terminal instead of to run PowerShell and command prompt in it. So this is designed and pre-configured to run with all of the things as such as WSL. And it, it does introduce features like Quake Mode. Anyone who doesn't know what Quake mode is, back in the original Quake, you can press the back tick button to open a console window and 
put in sheets for the game. So again, you can just Windows key and back tick, and you can open PowerShell out from anywhere in Windows operating system as a shortcut. So that's just a bit about WSL. So let's just show you a bit of the actual testing using it. So here's a, not sure how visible that is to use, but here is running Nmap and Mascan against Altro Mutual's website. Just to show we can perform normal network scanning from the, from inside this environment, which we couldn't back when it was first released. We can do some application testing. So here we have Dog also doing some directory enumeration again against Ultra Mutual. And it's, this is a Kali Linux. This is the, the application in Kali Linux that it's running, but it's accessed from Windows and is part of integrated into the Windows operating system environment. Again, Bob and Firefox we can access from from again, these are running inside Kali, but we have a default desktop experience, normal desktop experience in Windows with these tools. And it's not just tools installed by default in Kali that we can use. We can use non-default tools as well, such as Bloodhand, which can be is just installed from the repositories. This will also we can also run tools like this in Again, in Windows from Linux. So, just moving on now to Windows Sandbox. So, what is it and how can we use this for testing? So, Windows Sandbox. This is a lightweight desktop environment. It was, it's designed by Microsoft to run any apps you want in complete isolation. It was released in May 2019 update. So it'll run Windows OS, Windows 11 or Windows 10, depending on which OS your host machine is running. Anything installed inside it is sandboxed and just runs completely separate from your machine. Everything in it is temporary. So as soon as you close it, everything gets deleted. So it's an essence for, for us and for penetration testing a lightweight, disposable Windows virtual machine. What can we use this for, for testing? So tick line testing, reverse engineering, we can use it as a, as a place to install the binaries that we're testing in there instead of on our host machine. If we have to do configuration reviews as a test pen tester, we can just log into the car for the accounts that we're performing the review of in this machine instead of in our host machine. Any new tools or exploit scripts that we come across as pen testers, we can try them out inside this, inside this environment instead of running them in our host machine or booting up a, a, a full on VM that could take a few minutes to boot up, depending on how, how much memory or consumption that we're giving it. So it can be configured using uh, just a normal XML file, given an extension .wsb, and you can configure any settings at all that you want in it. So this here is an example of the, X, the kind of XML that it looks for. And in this particular example, I have set it to disable the virtual GPU, disable all network access, I've given it two host folders on my host machine. One is uh, just a, a reverse engineering folder that has a few a couple of tools in it. And the other one is just a downloads folder. So we can access any any files that are downloaded in the Windows sandbox. And then it'll just open Windows Explorer. So if we run this, we can just run this XML file by double clicking on it in Windows and it'll open up or environment here, ready to go with the, with the folder that we've mapped as the read-only folder. So, how can we use this now? Well, we can actually install some of the tools very quickly. We can install IDA free or immunity debugger within minutes. 
and have them running. And then if we can go from there and start using them. So we can use immunity debugger to fully debug and reverse, uh, reverse engineering uh, an executable file. In this case, I'm just using Vuln server. We can use IDA free as well. IDA Pro, if you have the license for it, I don't. We can use that. If we want to do some .NET framework re reverse engineering, we can use something like DMSpy if we wanted to. We, if, you're, if you prefer command line tools, we can use Radair. So before we move on, just a quick reminder that this, this is a security feature that Windows added to help protect against malware and malicious files. But it can become an, an avenue of attack. So 20, in 2020, a reverse engineer called Jonas Liegaard, I probably butchered that, sorry, but he disclosed, publicly disclosed uh, zero day in the activation of Windows Sandbox itself. So he found that if Hyper-V was already installed on a Windows server and you activated Windows Sandbox, any user could write to the System32 folder in Windows, which should not be able to. So just a, a little bit of a reminder, these things, while they're security features, they can become avenues of attack. Okay, so... The next thing, WSA, Windows Subsystem for Android. It is very similar to WSL, but it's for Android systems. It gives us a full Android, emulate, fully emulated Android environment. By default, it does make use of the Amazon App Store, which is a bit of a letdown. I don't know why they didn't try and get Google's help with it. So the default installation, you can just install it yourself at any time in Windows 11 by just installing the Amazon App Store. That will install WSA. So the default is very limited for penetration testing. You have to, any applications have to be installed from either the App Store, Amazon App Store, or sideloaded, sideloading the APK using ADB. And, of course, there's no root access in those images either, just like the Google Play images from Android Studio. So, how can we get, customize this now for penetration testing? There are ways we can do it. There are scripts available on GitHub if you, if you, have, if you want to that will give you root access in WSA, along with installing Google Play Store. Some of them do make use of Magisk, some of them are broken at the moment, some have fixes, but it, we need to be wary of using these for, because they will sometimes ask for administrator permissions to actually run. So we need to be careful about running anything like this for, from, from GitHub. So to default installation and how we need to configure this. So how do we get access for certificates or proxies? There's no G, there's no actual launcher image. There's no, there's no Android desktop that we can access. So we can use ADB. There's ADB commands to set local proxy, global proxy. We can use them. We can install certificates using ADB shell. We can actually, there's actually a Microsoft official Android launcher for some reason that is available from Google, on the Google Play Store that we can use. We, if we get the APK from that, we can install that. If we, if we used any of the GitHub scripts, they'll, uh, they will have installed Google Play Store by default, most of them. So we can install the, just anything straight from there. We can use ProxyDroid if we have root access. So again, what, what will this look like for us now? So again, we can access any of the Android applications straight from Windows without having to boot up an emulator. We can use, we can use a launch, uh, launcher as well. This here is the Microsoft launcher that we have installed. It's the most likely to work with WSA because of Windows. 
we can just any applications we run will just run side by side with Windows desktop applications for a fully integrated environment. So how can how can we test these? We can just proxy the applications as normal to but as we would with a normal Android emulator. We can use objection to interact with the applications as as we would with any other emulators. We can use ADB shell and get access to the file system as we would with anything else. So what good are these features for us to use? Why would we want to use these instead of VMware or VirtualBox? <laughs> to begin with, they're a lot faster and use way less resources than any of the, than them. The amount of times my laptop has started going nuts with the fan because I've been running VMs and emulators on it. I've never had that experience when running, when using WSL on it. There is, as I showed, there is built in integration between Windows, the Windows operating system and the, these features, these platforms. And they can be used to bypass, if you want to bypass any corporate policies that block you from using VMware or VirtualBox. If your company makes use of Azure VMs, they won't, those, the Azure VMs themselves block you from installing VMware or VirtualBox. So you'll need to make use of Hyper-V or w, you can use WSL. A client I was talking to used to run a pen testing team, but they wouldn't let him install VirtualBox or VMware to get a Kali environment on his, on his laptop. He got around this by using WSL to get Cal. <coughs> a few honorable mentions as well. So Windows does have a package manager itself. You may not, don't know if you know about it. You can also use Winget from the command prompt or PowerShell and install any different programs you use one from it. November last year, Microsoft introduced dev tunnels. To give you to allow developers to share local web services across the internet. Just at the start of September, in Visual Studio Code, they released the August update, which allowed for built-in port forwarding, so you can run any lo any locally running services on your laptop can be shared over the internet, not just web services, any. Services at all that you're running locally, you can now share over the internet with, I believe, certificates trusted by Microsoft. I believe I'd have I have to look into that myself a bit more. I I've only just come across Visual the Visual Studio update with that, so I haven't actually got had a chance to re do much research into it. Any questions on any of that? Anyone at all? <laughs> yep. So the resources, it uses a um, hard end. So VMware VirtualBox will use, could say you give it eight gigs of RAM. It'll use up, up to eight gigs of RAM. This does use a fraction of that. It's, I've never seen it go over, in all the time I've used it, I've never seen it go over like 200 meg, 300 meg RAM. And that's just partially from what the testing I've done with. You may end up running a much more computer, computer of intense resource or program that emit the resource and usage may go up with that. But personally, I haven't experienced any Cases where it's gone up over two or three hundred megs RAM. Anyone else? Don't be shy. Come on. Any any questions at all? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs>